Thank you for watching Scary Animal Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications whenever we release new episodes. Thank you for watching Scary Animal Attacks. Today's episode takes us to the bustling streets of San Francisco. A temperate town of affluence and beauty, San Francisco is a melting pot of cultures and lifestyles. Two very different lifestyles clashed on the day in question in an apartment building far from the typical settings of videos featured on this channel. Shout out to YouTube user Stevie Darling for suggesting the topic of today's video. On January 26th of 2001, 33-year-old Diane Whipple was returning from the grocery store and was walking up to the door of her 6th floor apartment. She was a college lacrosse coach at St. Mary's in Moraga and fit as a fiddle. She had so many accolades for her accomplishments in lacrosse that it would take too long to mention them here. Her hands were full with the bags of groceries in her purse as she dug around looking for her keys. She could hear something stomping and growling. As she put the bags on the floor, she glanced up from her purse and saw her neighbor, Marjorie Noller, being pulled along by a massive dog. Dan was familiar with this dog as it was the terror of the apartment building and had been part of several attacks on other dogs and people in the area. The dog barreling its way down the hallway toward Diane was not just any dog. It was a breed known as a Presso Canario, which is a type of Mastiff. Pressos are known to be great guard dogs, but the AKC indicates that they have the lowest rating for tolerance of children and strangers and have a low adaptability, but have the highest level of protective nature. This dog breed are cattle dogs primarily and not made for apartment buildings. Mrs. Noller had taken the dog up to the roof of the building for a walk and didn't bother putting a muzzle on him as it was a short trip. Then they began returning to her apartment near Miss Whipple's. That is when her dog named Bane charged ahead at the sight of Diane. Bane began growling and barking at her and dragged Noller down the hallway to Diane. Through the distortion of the peephole in her door, 77-year-old neighbor Esther Berkmeyer could see a dark shape over the top of a person's body in the hallway. She was drawn to her door by loud barking and screaming, then a loud crash against her door. She observed part of a person on the floor and groceries scattered about it. The dark shape on top of the person was not clearly identifiable, but it was clear by the noise that someone was being attacked by a dog. As she ran to the kitchen to call the police, she could hear Miss Noller yelling, Back! Back! As well as, No! No! in the hallway. During the attack, Whipple was knocked to the floor by the 140-pound dog, Bane. He bit her over 77 times, all over her body. The only parts of her body that were not bitten were her scalp and the soles of her feet. Bane bit down on her face but focused most of his aggression on her neck, lacerating it as he crushed her trachea and perforated her larynx. While Bane was attacking Diane, the other Presso Canario owned by Miss Noller joined the attack. While Bane continued to bite Diane, Hera tore at her clothing. As the dogs attacked Diane, Miss Noller tried to put her body between the dogs and Miss Whipple, but the dogs were too incensed and focused. The attack lasted ten minutes, and by the time it was over, Diane's blood covered both walls in the hallway and drenched the floor. Animal control officers and police arrived at the scene. The animal control officers had a great degree of difficulty getting Bane and Hera under control, but eventually subdued the enraged dogs and took them into custody. As police officers comforted a blood-covered and naked Diane in the hallway, she began crawling back toward her apartment. They told her to lay still, because the ambulance was on the way, and she would be treated soon. Diane was transported to San Francisco General Hospital for emergency medical treatment. Mrs. Noller was treated for a minor cut on her thumb by paramedics who noted that her clothes were covered in blood and her hair was matted with it as well. Diane Whipple died from trauma and blood loss from the dog attack a few hours later. The facts are now established, but if you are like me, you may wonder what led up to all of this. Bane and Hera initially belonged to a high-ranking member of the Aryan Brotherhood, Paul Cornfed Schneider. Cornfed was formally adopted as a 38-year-old incarcerated prisoner serving a life sentence at Pelican Bay by a married couple, 46-year-old Marjorie Noller and her 60-year-old husband, Robert Knoll. The pair had become acquainted with Cornfed as they were offering legal services to prisoners. It turned out Cornfed and a few of his fellow gang members were trying to raise aggressive guard dogs to sell to operators of drug labs from inside the prison. In March of 2001, a grand jury indicted Noller and Noel. Both were indicted for manslaughter and felonious keeping of a mischievous dog. Noller received an additional charge of second-degree murder. 
After a prolonged legal appeals process, Noller's second-degree murder conviction was upheld, and she remains in prison today. Noel served three years and was paroled in 2003, but died of heart failure after living out of his van due to health complications. Bain was euthanized immediately following the attack, and Hera was euthanized the following January. Thank you for watching Scary Animal Attacks. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider liking it and subscribing. Click the bell icon for reminders of new releases, and sharing our videos to your social media platforms can help other people be safe. Please be careful out there because you do not want to end up on an episode of Scary Animal Attacks.